you have conversations with ownership after every season and, and sitting down with, with Jimmy and sitting down with JW uh, and, and obviously to entrust myself and Andrew that their family has given us that, uh, you know, that trust to be here is a big deal. So with Dee and Jimmy, Whitney and JW, I mean, they've been ultra supportive uh, of us in a football way and in a, and in a personal way. They've been great to our family. So uh, really excited to continue to partner with Andrew uh, and we have work to do. Do you feel, you know, players who get their second contract feel they've accomplished quite a bit? Do you feel as a head coach? No. That's what you no. Got, got work to do. Kevin told us before you, there's a lot of trouble in your position accordingly. I mean, now there's going to be some stability. Most organizations had a long time. Like no, I, I was able to switch it. Yeah. Yeah. I think for Andrew and I, you know, it's a partnership where we're going to, we take our job seriously. We really, you know, we, we, we understand uh, the jobs we have in this town. We understand our fans and, and what they want this team to be. Uh, so we're just going to focus on working, you know, every waking minute to, to get this thing where we want it. Uh, but, but I just come back to this is, a, you know, for the organization that trust Andrew and I uh, speaks to what we've been able to do, but we have plenty of work to do. Uh, there's fortunately for us we got some great people in this building coaches players staff so uh, we'll just continue to work does that stability Kevin uh, change the trajectory of, of your plans or or do you just go on as if you're uh, no, yeah nothing changes <laughs> for us you know we walk in this building uh, when you're talking about Andrew myself and, and I think every coach every player you walk in here uh, and you have a job to do and we focus on that job Kevin, together you guys have Of course. I mean, we have work to do and until you've got that final one checked off. You haven't done it. And, and that's for us. Uh, as you know, there, there's one goal for every football team, every franchise, and, and that's, what, that's where we will keep our sights. Uh, obviously, in between, you try to to, to win some ball games and, and do right by the community and those type of things, but uh, we and, and every all 32 clubs we have one thing in mind. Kevin, it's been really difficult for your predecessors and Andrew's predecessor to get on the same page and put a program together. Um, why have you and Andrew been able to work so well together? Not only work well together, but produce results as it came from that. Uh, yeah, obviously uh, work every single day with Andrew. Uh, I wish he was smarter. Um, just wasn't blessed with the intelligence, unfortunately. But uh, no, honestly, we, we work We work every day. We, we push each other. Uh, I, I don't know to speak to the past. I don't I don't know that we care or anybody cares, but uh, we just kind of focus on the work. Yeah, I think I better be getting better every day. Uh, we were just talking with one of our players yesterday about Getting percentage points better every single day it can come in a bunch of different ways. It can come in how you run your practices, how you reach your football team, how you message your football team. Obviously, we're measured by wins and losses, uh, but our goal as a team, players, coaches, staff, we're trying to get better every day. Kevin, how are you ever satisfied? I mean, if you guys win the Super Bowl, then the next day you're going to be thinking we have to win another. So how are you ever satisfied? Ask me then, Jeff. I'll let you know. <laughs> Kevin, how much are you looking forward to the day you see Nick Chubb? Yeah, uh, just saw Nick in there. Uh, you guys are going to talk to him today, I think. He's he's working like crazy. Uh, you know, I know everybody wants to know, you know, when and, and when's he going to do this, when's he going to do that. I know this. He is working like crazy, and I got to I get to witness it in our building. Uh, I get to see him in our meetings. He's a huge, huge part of. Our program. He's a huge part of what we do, uh, and you know I'll let Nick speak for himself. But I get to witness him work firsthand. Not to cause you any pain, but thinking back to that week two injury when you saw him go down last year, I know you always say next man up. Is it easier said than done in a situation like that, considering what he means to this team? Of course, and you, you don't replace those type of players or people. Uh, you know, we knew Nick was going to go rehab and, and be back, and. and you know, none of us felt good about that, but it's not like he wasn't around last year. He was still around. So uh, you don't replace players like that. Obviously, people have to pick up their, some slack and that type of thing. But 
uh, he's a, again, I mean, this is uh, not breaking news, but he's a huge, huge part of what we do. Kevin, you've talked a lot about, um, and in, lieu, in lieu of the, the extension, and you've talked a lot about just like, you know, the message not getting stale from year to year. How do you go about making sure that doesn't happen, just kind of keeping guys honed in as you start a new season, but it can't be exactly the same? I think it's one of our jobs as coaches is to reach our players, and that can come in a variety of ways. And we, we talk even when you're teaching and you're learning, there are different ways to do that. There's different settings for a guy to learn. So we spend a lot of time as coaches trying to find ways to reach our guys. Not everybody learns the same way. Not everybody uh, thinks exactly like you do. So we work really, really hard to meet our guys where they are. Uh, I think part of that is getting to know each other and, and learn, building trust uh, with each other. That allows you to get to that point. Um, but it takes some hard work. Are you at all interested to see what it's like to coach a game on Sundays without worrying about the next two or three plays in That's a play caller saying? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it w yeah, potentially. Um, not really. Honestly, that's not really our focus right now. Deshaun was calling plays in that last period. He did a pretty good job, so maybe he'll do it this fall. Um, to go back, when you came here in 2020, uh, first time head coach, did you envision this? Did you get? Did you allow yourself to think? Okay, four years from now, it could become a time where I sign up and I'm going to be in Cleveland for the next X number of years. I don't really operate that way. I don't know that any of our coaches, players operate that way. We walk in the building and we got a job to do. Uh, we take our job seriously. We want to do the best that we can for this community, for this organization. Uh, but we really, I, at least I can speak for myself and I think I can speak for our team. We don't think that way. Did you ever envision that uh, when you get towards the end of the year, you have Mary Kay wants to talk about high school, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, that's why. Well, there's a lot of anxiety in the household but when kids are getting older uh, but uh, yeah I mean and, and that does allow me the opportunity Mary Kay just to talk about you know for our my family uh, for our players our coaches we feel very much a part of this community um, as all of us know that have kids it's it's crazy to see them grow in front of you and when you do get to some mile markers you do reflect and look back so certainly uh, crazy for me to think that way but um, very, very fortunate, very, very appreciative of the support we get from this community. I know we've asked you about having Mike Rabel in the fold here to help you out. It's one thing to be sitting in a room with him and you know have him point things out on film or whatever, but just the, the influence not only he's having on you, but the, but the staff when he's out there on the field, in the middle of the drills, engaged with not only the coaches, but the players. Yeah, Vrabes is an incredible asset uh, for us organizationally. He's an incredible asset for me. Um, I don't know what he would be doing if he wasn't here. Uh, he cannot sit on a couch, so uh, he we're getting our money's worth, and he's in every drill, and, and he's doing great in the meetings. And you know, I just uh, like I've told him, uh, he's a energy multiplier. It's fun having him around. Uh, he's a, a great great influence for our young coaches. He, he can provide some really good mentorship to our young coaches, and, and obviously he provides great value to our coaching staff as well. That's the first time we saw Dorian throw. Is he thrown before? Yeah, he just uh, recently got back up to throw. Is it a similar schedule to Sean? Kind of every other day? Different, uh, yeah, different injury, different time frame, but we'll, we'll be smart there and just kind of do what the docs tell us. How we were able to see the glimpse uh, you know, of the kickoff yeah. today. We saw it yesterday. Yeah. So now that you see it a little conceptualized on the field, are you any, any new feelings? No, I, I think for our players, speaking of new feelings, I think uh, they get to experience the speed of the play and how much, when you're on that kickoff team, how much sooner the return is on you. That's something that a bunch of guys have mentioned to me just, you know, back in the old days, you could run 30 yards and, and find the ball and start to get in your lane. And now it's just like you come out of your stance and bam, you're, you're, that play is on you. So I think they're getting a feel for that. Uh, I think the preseason will be a big deal in getting some of those reps. I think our, our practices with the Vikings out here will be helpful in that regard. Uh, but so it's, it's still a work in progress for players and coaches. So, just a couple more. teaching style, like your teaching style of coaches. I mean, we talked about the versatility of players and how important that is for you guys in the field. How important is versatility? 
Yeah, versatility is important, and, and you know, I would point to, you know, we we're just talking about Coach Raves, Coach Musgrave, guys that are on our staff that can <coughs> can fill in in, in different areas and, and can assist. Uh, we've been very fortunate to have some coaches that can bounce around offense, defense, special teams, uh, and, and provide value in a bunch of different ways. I saw a couple of linemen on either side of the ball on that kickoff. Um, how much does it feel like a scrimmage? Yeah, at, at the end of the day, I think with the ball in the hand, you know, that's what we were talking about a while back, if you remember. Uh, it may not look initially to our fans and to viewers like a, a football play that they're used to, but it still is blocking, it still is tackling, it still is running. Um, so at the end of the day, technique is still the number one thing that we're going to coach, the number one thing that's important on that play. Uh, when you reduce the distance and the speed a little bit, now you're going to get potentially those bigger players out there. So we'll continue to rep them and, and be ready to uh, – to evolve based on how the play is, is unfolding. Kevin, off of Scott's question, uh, Elvis talked a lot about that play becoming like this offensive type of play. Do you see that as an opportunity to be like an offensive-minded coach? Like, are they tapping into your expertise in terms of like drawing things up and sort of making it that there, way? There are definitely things that we've sat down and talked about that maybe look like an offensive play. Uh, I know this, it's another play where offensive players can touch the ball as well. So you're going to have two guys in the landing zone, and those two guys get a, an opportunity to do something with the ball. So uh, guys, if you can believe it, often want the ball. So there's a, a play where head out there and go get the ball.